Welcome to the Big Four Accounting Firms podcast, brought to you by BigFourAccountingFirms.com and the Big Four Accounting Firms YouTube channel. Before we get started, just wanted to remind everybody to support us if you have a chance or if you can. Even a dollar helps. And we have a link in the description to a website called Buy Me a Coffee. It's just a way to donate to us and support us. Again, any amount is helpful so that we can keep putting out content. And there's also other ways for you to support us in the show notes to this podcast or on YouTube in the description. In today's podcast, we're going to be covering a lot of different news stories. Well, first up, let's talk about what happened in the United States. Uh, well, there's multiple things that happened. President Biden, he announced he's going to raise the capital gains tax rates in the United States, targeting, it's supposed to be targeting the wealthy. And if you add up the various taxes, it could be up to 43% on capital gains taxes. And, and this will, I mean, I mean, it's, it's looking to target rich people, but as we know, rich people are very good at offshoring their investment activities and evading taxes, and they will need smart accountants to do that. And the big four accounting firms have done this their entire existence. And so what this means, if Biden actually gets this passed, which a lot of, I've seen a lot of people say it's probably not going to happen then the big four accountants are going to win a lot of work. And they're already winning work similar to what they did when the, the Trump tax cuts advising clients on what they think Biden will do. If you go on their, their various websites, they have insights into this. I saw Ian Wise's uh, one pager. It was very good. Uh, I like theirs. Theirs was easy to find. And I think what's re- what they're really trying to do is uh, is they're trying to prevent the GameStop saga from occurring again because it's caught a lot of hedge funds off guard including Citadel, which is one of the world's largest hedge funds. Uh, They lost an investment in a smaller hedge fund as related to that. If you increase capital gains tax rates, then people are going to stop doing short-term trading theoretically. I think this might be partially to do with that. Um, Other people have theorized that it could be related to people trading in crypto as well. But let's move on from that story. Next up, let's talk about Deloitte Australia. Australia has named a new CEO and their new CEO is Adam Powick and this news was in the Australian Financial Review which is a great source of news for the big four about the big four and as you might remember Deloitte let about 700 people go last year in Australia and this represented about 7% of their workforce in Australia which was a huge amount and it looked really grim except for they did that prematurely and then a bunch of employees left, and then they immediately went on a hiring spree. They had openings of more than 2,000 uh, employment opportunities for a while. And so coming in, the CEO faces a few issues. One of the biggest will be morale issues because they laid so many people off. That's an extensive amount of people. And then uh, people leaving and people not wanting to stay, people working from home. So he's going to face a retention problem in Australia, and he's going to face a recruiting problem. And a little bit more background about him. He was the former head of Asia Pacific Consulting for Deloitte. So it's a consulting firm, Deloitte primarily, and and he was the head of Asia Pacific Consulting. So it makes sense that he's getting elevated there. And another issue he might raise is with regards to sexual harassment and bullying, Deloitte released some numbers regarding their employee complaints, and they said that there's a there's about one complaint for every 650 employees. And it's, it's just a weird that they're disclosing that, but I found that they disclosed this number because KPMG numbers were released. Uh, apparently, employees were not uh, not too satisfied at KPMG, and we've spoken about this about KPMG several times. KPMG had over 100 complaints over a five-year period. In Australia, and you have to remember that KPMG is going to be much smaller than Deloitte. Uh, So KPMG had some some number of employee complaints there. And apparently this isn't a big thing in Australia now. And so there's pressure on ENY and PwC in Australia uh, to release the same sexual harassment and bullying information. And we all know about Australia and the big four accounting firms, what happens there goes around the world so i'm sure this transparency will soon be required around the world and if you remember about kpmg specifically we spoke about kpmg and gender discrimination in the united states 
where KPMG had to make settle pay- settlement payments to women that were underpaid in New York as compared to their male counterparts. So KPMG is running into a number of issues globally. I mean, it won't have a huge impact on them, I don't believe. Uh, the, the big four accounting firms have these issues. Uh, it, it could go against them in the social justice climate, but I doubt it because they'll overwhelm it with press releases about what they're doing about diversity and pay gaps, et cetera. And then I guess they have to disclose these harassment claims now. So we'll have to keep an eye on that. And another thing about KPMG in Australia is that they are giving their their staff a one-time thank you bonus equal to 4% of their annual salary. And that's that's pretty good money right there. And we've seen this across the big four accounting firms in the past month or two where they're trying to motivate staff to stay. As we spoke about Deloitte, they, they are having issues in Australia, hiring people and retaining people. And this is happening around the world as the big four accounting firms are winning more work. They realize they shouldn't have laid people off so quickly with regards to COVID. And I mean, people are working from home. So I think that was another thing is, is they thought that, that the, COVID, the pandemic thing would last forever. And the working from home would take away from client work. So I think the big four panicked a little bit too quickly on letting people go. But I mean, that's what happens when you let greed drive you. I spoke about that last year. The partners were worried about their own pay and not making hundreds of thousands of millions of dollars. So they let people go so they could preserve their bonuses. And now they're reaping the effects of that because they have less employees are not able to make as much money as they could. And they might have to move more and more away from the billable hour than they already are. And just related to this, we've spoken before about KPMG US and the PwC US, how they're giving bonuses out and they're trying to retain people by increasing salary and well as well. And PwC said that they were giving staff salary increases and they're also giving them $250 and encouraging them to take vacation so that they can relax from working from home all the time. And the last piece of news that I wanted to discuss, which was on PwC's website, is that they are announcing a new acceleration center in Hyderabad, India. And if you work at PwC, you know that they have outsourcing locations in India, and these are called acceleration centers. It seems like they change the names for these all the time, but this is a new acceleration center in Hyderabad. And what this does is it, it takes all the outsourcing work from other PwC locations, primarily from the U.S. So that's just some news there and some good news if you live in Hyderabad. So that's the news that I have to cover today. Uh, make, make sure to stay up to date on all the updates that we do by subscribing to this podcast. Support us financially through the Buy Me A Coffee link in the show notes to this podcast. And subscribe to our YouTube channel. And like this video on YouTube if you can.